Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So hope you all are doing great and fine. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was a spotter and trained by Barangan. This is part 1, and if you want part 2 of this video then please complete 300 likes on this video. So let's get in the video. Barangan Louis Senbaran howled in anger at his soon to be impending death. Ironic really since he always considered himself the true embodiment of the word and was now dying due to his own power being used against him. What infuriated him even further was the fact he had failed to kill Saukazen and get his revenge on the rogue Shinigami for what the arrogant being did all those years ago in usurping the Hollow King's throne. In an act of desperation, the former ruler of Waco Mundo launched his weapon at Aizen, only for the man to turn his head with that arrogant smirk on his face and watch the weapon be destroyed. Whether by Aizen himself or Baragan's own power was unknown. With his skull decaying, the former Hollow King felt his life ending, his last form of consciousness retreating into his crown, it falling from the sky to the ground below, and knew the last part of him would shatter upon impact. However, just mere seconds from the event, a ripple in space and time appeared around that area, much to the shock of everyone seeing it, even Azen. But just as it quickly happened, the ripple was gone, and the phenomenon was just a small footnote in the history of this ongoing war between the two warring sides. Elsewhere, the golden crown of the Hollow King fell through the dimensional rip, the pathway from one dimension to the next in a nexus filled with infinite possibilities and outcomes that would baffle any mind. The source of the ripple was the dimension that the crown was heading to now with a violent battle being held in a place where three people and a large nine-tailed creature with incredible power were fighting. The amount of energy being generated by the creature, its summoner, and the two opposing them had shook the very ground around them. On one side was Ichiha Madara, founder of the Ichiha clan, master of the Sharingan, former shinobi of Konoha, and commander of the QB no Kitsune. On the other side was Senju Hashirama, who was the founder of the Senju clan, master of the Mokuten bloodline, and the Shadame Hokage of Konoha. Beside him was his wife Uzumaki Mido, who was from the Uzumaki clan and a distant relative of the Senju and Ichiha clan, due to them being related to their great ancestor that was the Sage of Six Paths. At the point in time when the ripple effect opened above the warring parties, Ichiha Madara had seen the events above, his concentration on the fighting being lost in the moment, which cost him losing his control over QB, thanks to Senju's own power to calm the great Biju long enough for Mido to seal it into her body, using the unmatched mastery in the way of sealing. Shortly after that occurred, Madara was slain by Hashirama, or rather it was believed the man had been slain after the battle had ended along with the Ichiha's life. While no body was found after the fight was over, it was presumed that the man's body had washed away with the water and sunk into the depths of the darkness to never be seen again. As for the Hollow King's golden crown, it had transformed into a wild bone-like version of its once regal form and floated over near Hashirama's feet. Frowning, the tired Senju clan leader and Hokage of Konoha picked up the item in question before showing it to his wife. Curious. What is it? Asked Mito while examining the bone-like crown cautiously. I don't know Mito-chan, but it did not belong to Madara. Whatever it is, I sense death within its very structure and could be a danger to anyone holding it for too long. We should seal it away in the forbidden scroll of sealing my brother and I have created to ensure such a thing isn't touched by anyone else," answered Hashirama with sealing it away and walked with his wife away from the soon-to-be-named Valley of the End. It's really that dangerous. Asked Mito with her husband nodding. Whatever I sensed in that crown was a shadow of its true power, but what was there within felt like I had touched a piece of the Shinigami himself. If someone were to restore its power back and learn to control it. The results would be devastating in the wrong hands, answered Hashirama with Mito nodding. Shouldn't we try to destroy it then? If it is that dangerous, perhaps sealing it away is not the best course of action, should your successor not be so. Honorable, stated Mito with her husband shaking his head. I do not know what would need to be done to destroy this fragment of death Mito-chan. My attempt or any attempt for that matter to try could restore the crown to its former glory. Even worse, it could fragment into hundreds of pieces and spread throughout the elemental countries, causing untold suffering in a way never before imagined. No. The best option for us now is to seal it away and leave a warning for my successors to leave this item alone, replied Hashirama with Mito looking pensive. Let's just hope that each of your successors will listen, stated Mito, since she was not so optimistic as her husband. Me too Mito-chan. Me too, replied Hashirama while he planned to talk to his brother about what he found and swear him to secrecy. Konoha unknown location many years later, Uzumaki Naruto opened the forbidden scroll of sealing, his eyes widening at the sight of the list of jutsus and ancient knowledge before him. It was quite a sight for one so young. Over a hundred years of shinobi knowledge was in this scroll, and he was the only kid his age to look upon its contents. Of course, Naruto needed to find something specific in terms of a jutsu to pass the secret exam Mizuki had told him about, and the boy was thinking along the lines of another clone jutsu. 
the one at the academy had always been a bane to him, something he suspected all the academy instructors knew about and used to their advantage. The people in Kanoha never liked him growing up, and they made their dislike known through their cruelty with their glares, insults, and beatings that were at their worst on his birthday. The Hokage had tried to comfort him at the hospital when the people had made their hatred for him known during those time, but Naruto over time felt the words were predictable, almost rehearsed in a way that the old man was expecting the abuse to happen each year and had yet to do anything to stop each physical. They asked the Sandame Hokage why they hurt him the way they did, but the old man wouldn't answer right away, his eyes hesitant and fearful that it couldn't be explained. But not this time. Now Naruto would perform an advanced jutsu, get the respect he felt was deserving of him, and then maybe. Just maybe. The people would finally change their minds of what they thought of him. Now let's see what we have here. Shadow clone jutsu. Seems pretty advanced. I better hold off on that for later in case I can't find another I can use, said Naruto out loud to himself before reading further along the scroll to see if there was another jutsu he could learn. And it was then he saw something that caught his eye. A complex storage seal meant to contain something that only someone with chakra levels around that of Kage could open. Meaning in order to open this seal, you had to either be a Hokage, a Sanin, or someone with the chakra levels matching them. It was designed that way to ensure only someone strong could access the item in the event Anbu, Jounin, or someone of lower rank, had managed to steal the scroll before examining its contents. Like Naruto was doing now. Of course, the person responsible for this seal never did put into account that a child, much less an Uzumaki at that, would have such high reserves and with his simple touch would unseal the item contained within. Naruto looked at the item and frowned at the sight of the strange crown made of bone before seeing the note beside it. Dear reader, if you are reading this, then you are either the current Hokage of Konoha or someone with chakra reserves of that level. If you are the former, I hope you are ruling the village well since my time and pray the will of fire burns brightly. If you are the latter, I must beg of you to reseal this item that lays before you away again and do not under any circumstances let this strange object connected to death be used. It is an object I believe can kill anyone that channels their power into it, as I sensed it trying to do when I first picked it up and trying to strengthen itself. Even when my wife sealed it away, I sensed it trying to feed off our chakra and stabilizing itself in its already weakened condition. It has been doing that since my term as Hokage and no doubt has done so all the way until now to every Hokage since my own term. Due to the seal and the length away from where the chair in my office or your office if you are the current Hokage, I would wager the crown you see before you has gathered enough chakra to keep itself stable from here on out, depending on how long it has been since I found it. So for the love of Kami, do not put this crown on or try to harness its power for your own gain. It will most likely kill you. Signed, Senju Hashirama. Shadame Hokage. So this thing can possibly kill people if used, said Naruto while staring at the seemingly harmless thing in front of him. In all honesty, part of Naruto longed for death and that same part of him whispered to put it on. To be free of Konoha, its cruelty aimed at him, its hatred aimed at him and at his very existence. Who were they to judge him? What right did they have to hate him? What possible reason did they have that the Sandame Hokage wouldn't tell him? It didn't matter to Naruto, as the whisper in his head grew louder the more he stared at the crown and the desire to do something about his life for once that could not be controlled by that of outside forces, which would no doubt wish to punish him physically or otherwise later for using this, apparently, dangerous item. How could they punish him for his actions if he was dead? Raise the boy from the grave and make him their servant. Ha. To hell with them and to hell with life. Reaching for the item, Naruto picked up the crown, it almost shining in the moonlight of the clear night sky, as if it belonged in an environment eerily similar to this one, and he could almost feel the power coursing through it. He could feel a pull of his chakra now entering the crown, its leak shine despite being made of bone, made it almost glow, and the call to where the object grew to the point where Naruto could no longer ignore the ever-suicidal desire to put it on his head. Embracing what would no doubt be his death, Naruto did just that and put the crown on his head. And that was when everything went to hell. It was also around that time that Aruka and Mizuki showed up. One moved to stop Naruto and the other moved to secretly kill him along with Aruka to further cover up his plans for the Forbidden Scroll. No sooner had Naruto put the crown on his head did the object begin to glow pure white and an invisible pressure covered everything for miles. Both within Konoha and many miles well beyond the village's walls that awoke practically everyone in the village. From old to young, from civilian to shinobi, from dog to cat to bug, and basically put the entire village on full alert not seen since the QB attack 12 years ago. Many if not all the adults in Kanoha believed this was an attack by the fox itself, that the brat they all hated finally showing his true colors after deceiving the Hokage for so long and had somehow remembered how to use its demonic power before unleashing it on the village. 
Such thoughts were further strengthened when a large spire of energy erupted from the forest region, a howl of something inhuman echoing into the night sky, scaring away all manner of creatures in the general area. All of them too fearful to face this entity they knew from instinct alone, would kill them if caught in its line of sight, simply because it could kill them. The only creatures not fleeing from the impending source of terrifying power was that of the human beings dressed for battle in full shinobi outfits from Jounin to Anbu to the Hokage himself. The old man was joined by Himura and Kaharu, along with Danzo with several shinobi that the Hokage knew were once in the other man's root program. And therefore their loyalty was not to the Hokage. Not fully anyway. Not unless Danzo was made Hokage. In any case, this threat concerned the entire village, and the Sandame Hokage knew that Danzo wouldn't dare try anything when Kanoha was at risk of falling with no one being left alive. What good was a Hokage if the only one in the village was the Hokage? You could order yourself around, but that would just be crazy and stupid all rolled into one. I warned you about the QB Jinchuriki and how it should be watched more carefully Siratobi, remarked Danzo with Hamura and Kahara nodding in agreement. Like you would have done if I let you have your way Danzo. Jinchuriki need emotions for the mana seal to function properly. You would deprive the boy of both and doom us all Danzo. And don't say we can use anyone to hold QB because only an Uzumaki can do it. Yuzumaki Mito stated that early on long before her passing and the Shadame Hokage himself agreed. I highly doubt anyone here would dare call my former sensei and his wife a lair. Countered Hiruzen with a look while neither of his two former teammates saying anything and Danzo wisely kept his mouth shut too. In any case, should the boy survive this treasonous action with the demon still inside his body, I move he be locked away until a proper time when we can use him to produce new potential Jinchuriki to hold the QB and mold it into a proper weapon. As you yourself just said Siratobi. Only an Yuzumaki can hold the most powerful of the Biju, stated Danzo with Hiruzen Grimace, while Hamura and Kahara nodded in agreement, knowing the rest of those on the councils along with the clan heads would agree to this. They tried the Hokage's approach to things. Now he would try theirs. When they arrived at the massive spiraling tower of energy, they saw Aruka and Mizuki watching this whole thing in fear. Before the Hokage could demand answers from either man, the tower of energy began to thin, condense, and retract downward from where it had exploded out of when everything first happened. When the energy died down enough for them to see clearly, everyone in the clearing, armed with weapons and ready to use jutsus, were shocked to see Yuzumaki Naruto floating slightly off the ground before his sandaled feet touched the grass beneath him. What shocked them everyone the most was the change in Naruto's attire, hair, and overall appearance that was not like the boy they knew. Naruto's clothing was almost all white with hints of black lines with fur, along the short sleeve shirt he was now wearing, it had a regal look the boy's appearance, and any experienced tailor could tell you was no doubt made from very expensive cloth. They also noticed that the boy was also wearing thick golden wristbands on each of his wrists, and a belt which consists of three thick chains attached to a large metal disc with a sun emblem on it. In his right hand was the top of a metallic cane colored in the blackest of black, with the top having the skulled face of a fox with haunting ruby eyes that almost glowed eerily in the moonlight. As for the boy's body, it was much taller than what he had been earlier, but rather rivaled the height of the tallest boy in Naruto's class that was Aburam Shino, and well muscular for a boy his age. Much different from the skinny almost malnourished boy that would have to gorge on Raymond daily just to have some manner of body weight. But what could have been the most shocking thing they saw was the boy's face and hair were not what they recalled when looking at Naruto. The boy's hair was no longer spiky blonde, but rather spiky red with the crown made of bone sitting proudly on his head, and the boy's face showed scars along his face. One was coming down the right eye with another one on the left side of his face just below the nose down to the chin. When the energy around Naruto finally retracted fully, the boy's eyes opened, and his blue eyes stared at them all with a bored expression. Like they were insignificant specks of dust and dirt that deserved nothing less than a brief gust of wind to blow them all away from his sight. Cracking his neck from side to side, the boy looked at the various shinobi in front of him, from Jounin to Anbu, to Danzo to the Hokage, to some of the various clan heads that were there to Aruka, who he paused to look at for a small moment and making the man nervous before moving on until he stopped when seeing Mizuki in the tree. Narrowing his eyes at the scared man, he raised his left hand with his palm exposed and made everyone tense at his sudden movement. Allah said Naruto from which a shot of red energy flew out of his hand and blew a hole the size of a man's skull, where the heart was located. Mizuki couldn't even let out a proper cry of pain, as death took him, and he fell out of the tree onto the ground with his eyes showing the horror of his situation. The shinobi seeing this looked from Mizuki to Naruto and did this several times in disbelief before they all went tense when the boy redirected his gaze to the Hokage. Naruto. Questioned the Sandane cautiously while taking a careful step forward. The boy is resting. You will address me for now Sandame Hokage, said Naruto, but in a tone that was not the boy the Hokage knew, and it was clear from his words that it was not Naruto addressing them. QB? 
questioned the Hokage with more caution and a hint of fear, while the shinobi around them got ready for a fight. Surprisingly, the being now possessing Naruto's body laughed at him, and the laugh did nothing to comfort their fears. If you are referring to the giant nine-tailed fox that was sealed in the boy, then no is my answer to you old man. I am not the fox. In fact. I killed the demonic beast, answered the figure with an evil smile that made the fears of everyone around him spike. Why you killed the QB no Kitsune? Impossible. Stated Hiruzen with a red-haired boy shaking his head. So naive for one so old. Or perhaps it's arrogance that blinds you. Doesn't matter. The fox was killed by me. Devoured by me. That demonic energy from the Biju went a long way into reviving and strengthening me when the boy put my crown on his head. I have never met someone so unafraid of death, but given his memories growing up during his childhood. It's no real surprise. Is it? Stated the figure with his accusing question and stare making the Sandame Hokage nervous. I don't know what you mean, replied Hiruzen, while the figure in Naruto's body let a sneer come across his scarred face. I have no love for human filth, and even less for those that would dare lie to my face like you are doing right now, stated the figure with his right hand tightening around his cane. I am not lying. Exclaimed Hiruzen with a being narrowing Naruto's blue eyes at him with a piercing gaze. Bala. Stated the figure with another blast firing suddenly from the boy's left hand and killing a Jounin right next to Inuzukitsune. No. Exclaimed Aruka at seeing the man go down with the same expression of horror on his face that Mizuki had. For every lie you tell. Someone around you will die, stated the figure in Naruto's body with the Hokage, looking from the dead Jounin back to him. You didn't have to do that, replied the Hokage with the being now possessing Naruto once more looking at him with disgust. Like a god looking at a fly that was buzzing at him and was seconds away from being swatted out of existence. On the contrary old fool. I did have to do that for the boy's sake. The memories of that Jown in using him for target practice in weapons and jutsus when he was seven were very clear on how I should proceed. If anything I was too merciful. The fact you lied just gave me the excuse to kill him right now to make my point get across, answered the figure with the Hokage's eyes widening and shock like the others. Just who are you? If you are not QB or Naruto, then what do I we call you? Asked Hiruzen with Naruto's face now sporting a cruel smile and a chuckle leaving the boy's throat. My name? My name is Baragan Lusenbern. Former Hollow King of Waco Mundo for all tortured and lost souls that failed to cross over to their proper sides in the afterlife when they die answered Baragan with the shinobi around him going tense. I don't understand, stated Hiruzen with Baragan shaking his head. Humans never do understand things until it's too late. And while we are on the subject of not understanding, perhaps you can help me understand something. Like why this child was abused so badly by these fools around me for something that was not his fault. Why the village never honored the dying wish of his parents, who died so honorably in battle against the QB and sealed the demon within him questioned Baragan with many shinobi around the two looking at each other in shock, and it was clear these shinobi didn't know the truth, while the few that didn't look shocked were silently cursing at the secret coming out. Sealed the demon. Wait. He's the son of the Yandame Hokage. Questioned Aruka with the Hollow King looking over at him for a second. Yes. He is the son of that man. So much potential in this boy and it was squandered and suppressed by fools like this one in front of me. Exclaimed Baragan with disgust in his eyes. Suppressed. What do you mean suppressed? Asked Aruka while seeing Baragan turn Naruto's face to him and scoff at the man like he was an idiot. Aside from the abuse he suffered, this boy was taught next to nothing and learned less than nothing no thanks to the suppression seals around his mind, meant to keep his brain working with the attention span of five-year-old child. Not to mention the seals that were meant to mask his true hair color he inherited from his mother's side of the family to show he was indeed an Uzumaki, answered Baragan, while the old Hokage in front of him wincing at that. I thought if the boy had blonde hair like his father, the people would be more receptive to him and hate Naruto less for what he held, answered the Hokage with Baragan once more scoffing like he had just been told something completely wrong by a total moron. That hardly worked from the start and even less when you gave him the Yuzumaki name that belonged to his mother. Those of Yuzumaki blood have red hair and hiding it just made the people think otherwise with the last name. They no sooner believed he was in Yuzumaki than they did in him being completely human, remarked Baragan with the old Hokage wincing again. I did my best with what resources I had to help Naruto, but. Hiruzen replied, but was silence when another Jounin went down that was close to Aruka. That particular Jounin nearly set the boy fire on three different occasions during three different birthdays. The third attempt was nearly a success. Also, you haven't explained your actions for the suppression seals that worked on his mind and I had to destroy them from the inside out so this child could properly absorb my memories without the risk of his poor brain exploding, stated Baragan while the Hokage shifted uneasily. We felt the boy was too dangerous to be kept without some form of proper restraint being put into effect. 
his potential combined with being the Jinchuriki of the demon was too great to ignore, stated Hamura with Baragan looking at him for a moment before refocusing on the Hokage. And what of the boy's godparents? They couldn't help raise and watch him properly. I find that impossible unless they were either lied to about Naruto being dead or they have no love much less desire to take care of the boy. Which is it? Questioned Baragan with the Hokage wincing along with the Shinobi Council elders and Danzo too, since they were hoping the former Hollow King of Waco Mundo wouldn't know about the two Sanin. How do you know about them? Asked Kaharu with Baragan touching Naruto's temple with his left hand. Two sources. First, were memories. Memories from the fox himself that I obtained when I devoured him. Second, the souls of Namaka's Minato and Yuzumaki Kashina that were left in the boy as a failsafe for the seal that held the fox, answered Baragan and saw the shinobi around him gasp in shock. The part of their souls were inside Naruto. Asked the Sandane with Baragan letting out a small amused chuckle at the question. Yes. Honorable and cunning to the last. Truly humans worthy of recognition in their own way. Haribo would given them some measure of respect given she was the espada of sacrifice. But we're getting off topic here. In regards to Naruto's loving parents, they manifested themselves when QB's power rushed into my being when the Biju tried to expel my presence in the boy and it backfired with my power being restored while within the boy. But the seal itself is still at work and I too will one day be absorbed fully into Naruto shortly in a few months. By that point, all my memories, my powers, how to use them, and everything that I am, will be fused into his being for the boy to command as he sees fit. Even now they are talking to him inside his mind, learning of his life, seeing his memories as I have, and they are most displeased. Stated Baragan with an empty chuckle leaving Naruto's throat while looking the Sandame right in the eyes. This information is highly classified. We should not be out here talking about this so casually, said Danzo suddenly since he didn't want this getting worse and possibly risk outside forces hearing anything else. How very true. Not that it matters anyway to me since the truth will get out sooner or later. But by all means, let's walk to your meeting room where you once decided the boy's life mere hours after the QB was sealed and let us speak of this in a more civilized manner, remarked Baragan as he walked forward in the boy's body and grinned when the large army of shinobi parted to let him pass. The grin never left the former Hollow King the entire time he was walking to the Hokage Tower. Hokage Tower meeting room, the forbidden scroll of seals had been retrieved by the Hokage himself and put away in the vault it was held with a sequence to open it being changed for good measure to ensure there was no repeat of tonight's events. Arag and Louis Senbaran sat in the chair opposite of the governing bodies of Kanoha that were in front of him, his eyes looking at everyone with disdain, disgust, and dislike with it not necessarily being in that order. The civilian council was to Baragan's left, the clan heads were sitting to his right, the two shinobi council members along with Danzo and the Hokage were in the middle. They were all different shapes, sizes, and the only thing they had in common was they were stinking of fear. And they weren't wrong in that regard. All of us are here regarding the new development surrounding Yuzumaki Naruto and the this being Baragan Lewis Enbaran that has killed the Biju, explained Hiruzen and saw the civilian council looking pleased to hear the fox was no more while still being fearful of the entity that killed it. Among other things that need to be addressed, stated Baragan while looking them all in the eyes and saw they were not going to dispute that. Yes. With the Biju inside Naruto dead, Kanoha is now without a Jinchuriki and thus at a disadvantage if any other village wishes to use theirs in a war with us. At the same time we must also address Naruto's future in Kanoha and how it should be changed from the life he had previously here, said the third Hokage, while Baragan was moving his cane slightly left of right like he was bored. Is there really anything to discuss Hokage-sama? The boy's value hasn't changed in the slightest, stated one member of the civilian council. Actually it has changed since word has no doubt spread throughout the village of Naruto being the son of the late Yandame Hokage and Yuzumaki Kishina. I assume you wish the boy to receive his inheritance Baragan-sama, replied Hiruzen with Baragan nodding slightly. Wait. Why should we give the boy much less this thing anything of the Yandames or his wife? They were never married. Illegitimate children receive no such things until they are full-grown adults. Stated Councilman Haruno since his father had put that law into effect to ensure his family didn't have any bastard children. How far in the dark do you honestly expect to keep these fools Sandame Hokage? You tell them that the fox they hate is sealed in this boy, but keep his lineage in the shadows and no doubt sealed away until your perfect weapon is too loyal if not too stupid to really oppose the idea of ripping this village to pieces. When was the boy even going to learn of his heritage? Or was he to stay oblivious forever while well, those of you sitting in your cradle of power watch him struggle to come to terms with not knowing? Questioned Baragan with a sneer once more crossing Naruto's face through him. He was going to be told at the proper time. To be honest Baragan-sama, you had no right to tell him or trigger the events that did, scolded Kahara before Baragan let his displeasure of being talked to in that matter be known and slammed his cane down on the wooden floor. 
The dark energy from it damaging the room, the walls cracked, windows shattered, the ceiling above leaking dust, and the floor splintered in a spiderweb-like pattern. His gaze was hardened, and it was clear the former Hollow King was not happy with this insolence brought about by this old woman. Do not presume to judge me like you are my superior in every way old woman. Your species has the lifespan of fleas. I have lived longer than any one of your bloodline, and long before when the nine bid you were all one single entity sealed within your legendary sage of six paths. Do not presume to scold me like I am the child that sits before you that I inhabit. I could kill you all on a whim and not shed a tear of regret or sadness with the boy feeling the same way. Especially after all he has been through, which you all let happen, and let's not forget you have kept so many things from him from the start, with the fox sealed inside his body being one of them. Exclaimed Baragan with the humans around him shaking in their seats. What exactly is it that you want from us Baragan Sama? Asked Hirazin humbly with the former Hollow King smiling a cruel smile using Naruto's face. Simple. I want the boy to have a life. A happy life. A life you would never have let him achieve if not for his actions and putting on my crown. Ironic isn't it? He put it on in the belief that it would kill him. That he would at least decide how he died without anyone punishing him for it. Only for this turn of events and my awakening and absorption in the QB's place doing the exact opposite through me. The boy and I will merge into one single being with his mentality being the dominate one, though my persona will ensure he matures well enough to not be the naive fool you were molding to be your weapon. As such, he will inherit my powers, my knowledge, and what he can do so that the boy may one day take it beyond what I can do. So much potential in this child. He was born to take things in his possession to the next level and break the limits around him. Such potential only manifests itself early once every few centuries, answered Baragan with a large group of people around him being nervous when hearing that. I may have lost the QB inside the brat, but perhaps I can manipulate this being or the boy after the two merge into one. Regardless, I will mold the boy into being my weapon, regardless of what this thing wants, and I will not be stopped. Thought Danzo since he was not going to let his personal ambitions be stopped by the supposed former king of all hollows. As such, I have stipulations and conditions I want put into place that will ensure Naruto stays in Kanoha long after I'm gone. After all, I'm sure you wouldn't want him to go to another village like Iwa, Kumo, or even a minor shinobi village to become a devastating force that could bring everyone around him to their knees, stated Baragan while all the members of the governing body of Kanoha paled at the idea of Naruto leaving the leaf and one day become its enemy. What are your terms? Asked the Hokage, well the former Hollow King just smirked at him. First, the boy's lineage is to be made known to everyone. Do not hide it. Do not try to spin it that you were protecting him from his enemies, since we both know that is a lie, and I hate liars. I will be taking up residence at the Namaka's home for the time being, unless I find it too disgusting to my taste, and I simply destroy it. I am also going to need access to the Namaka's and Yuzumaki accounts his parents left for the boy, while viewing all the holdings and investments they had in this village. I will not have my heir living off the scraps people throw away or have him diving into dumpsters like he did until the age of seven or living in that condemned apartment building he moved into at the age of eight through your kind act of finding him a home. Second, those that hurt the boy are to be punished and some even executed publicly depending for their crimes based on the various memories I have seen of people committing them. Third, financial restitutions will be made from every store owner that kicked him out or sold him poor quality goods at an overpriced value. Fourth, the boy will have traveling right like the Sanin do, and speaking of the Sanin. I want those two neglectful morons here in two weeks to answer for their crimes against him. If they don't arrive within two weeks. Half of this village's children will die from the power I will unleash before the eyes of their parents, stated Baragan with the clan heads protesting. Wait. You can't. Our children and the children of this village are innocent. Protested Inoichi since the thought of his little being destroyed before his eyes being too much to withstand. I can't. Did you just state to me what I can and cannot do? I can do whatever I wish to this village, and if it means killing half of the next generation of shinobi in training, then I'll do it with a smile on my face. The same smile the idiots in this village had when they tried to butcher this boy's body, mind, and soul during the time he was growing up here. So I suggest you get a message to those two san and quickly within two weeks, or else the population in this village will be crippled for several decades. You have two solid weeks to get two people back to Kanoha, and let's be honest here when I say I know they can get here in half the time. I'm only giving you two weeks because I want to see just how much they love this village and their godson to that extent. Depending on when they get here should prove to say volumes in that regard to both, countered Baragan with his power flowing throughout the damaged room and further reinforcing the fact that he was indeed holding all the cards and using them fully to his advantage. Any further demands Baragan-sama? Ask Hirazin while making a mental note to get a message out to Tsunade and Jiraiya, the fastest way possible, while telling them that saying no was not an option. Yes. 
My fifth demand requires that you Sandame Hokage reveal yours and everyone else's hands in Naruto's mistreatment. That you encouraged it, allowed the people to get away with abusing the boy, and what punishments were delivered to the people were in fact minor. Sixth, since the boy will be my heir to my power, not to mention his parents once the pieces of their souls are absorbed into him fully like I did with devouring the QB, the boy qualifies for the Kra, and thus will be allowed to take multiple wives to revive his clan. For those of you among the clan heads here with daughters, you will be setting up arranged marriages for them so they will marry the boy, but they will under no such circumstances rule over him, much less try to manipulate him at your request, and any girl he wishes to marry that catches his interest will not be shunned away unless good reason is found with unquestionable proof. As to my seventh and final term, you will reveal the truth on how QB appeared 12 years ago, and not simply because it appeared due to being a mindless beast like you've been spinning since that night. You know what I'm talking about Sandame Hokage, said Baragon with a Hokage sighing, while the civilian council frowned, the clan heads doing the same, and the shinobi council scowling, since they didn't want that piece of information known while Danzo was seething on the inside. Damn. I need public support for the last loyal Ichiha, and that won't happen if the people find out an Ichiha somehow had a hand in the QB attack. Danzo, as he tried to use the Sharingan eye surgically implanted in him and hidden behind his bandaged face on the boy. Only to find it was useless. That stupid fool. He thinks that hypnotic power I sensed behind that bandaged face of his will influence me. Ha. Azen Zanpakuto makes his power look like a joke. I will not be manipulated again by such a power, and neither will my heir. Your death will come soon enough old fool thought Baragon, while making a mental note for the boy to be mindful of Danzo, so he doesn't somehow fall into the same situation he did with Azen all those years ago. I think I can safely speak for everyone here when I say we humbly agree to all of your terms Baragan sama said Hirazin with Baragan sneering at him like he was an ant. I'm sure you are humble. Just remember that I am not naive nor stupid in believing you agree to these terms willingly. I can see even now that some of you are plotting against me and the boy to use him for your future plans. So know this piece of information in advance because I will not say it again. Any attempt now or in the future to control me or the boy will fail miserably. That when caught, you will be annihilated in a slow painful manner that no amount of pleading, begging, and or crying out will save you from your well-deserved death. You will be made to suffer in front of your loved ones as they watch you all slowly rot and die. Stated Baragon with his eyes drilling holes through those in the room with him. But what he said having been said, the former king of all hollows got out of his chair and walked out of the room to the home that rightfully belonged to the boy. This is bad Hirazan. The lives of the people in Kanoha are now further in jeopardy than ever stated Danzo with the old Hokage nodding. We cannot turn down his demands Danzo. You know that. The amount of power he was using earlier makes us all, and the previous Hokage's plus QB combined look tame by comparison. Can you really tell me you would defy this being, knowing that everyone in the village will suffer for it and die because your pride won't allow you to be humble just once? Asked the Hokage with Danzo remaining silent on the matter. No, but I will not stand by quietly while this thing uses us and manipulates things to his advantage exclaimed Danzo with Nara Shikaku groaning. Troublesome. Don't you mean manipulate things to his advantage against you? Face it Danzo, you were the one spearheading the idea of making Naruto into a mindless weapon since the beginning and making us all question the Yandame's sealing ability. The only thing I'm glad about is I don't have a daughter this guy can have me set up an arranged marriage with, Shikaku said while Inoichi was crying for the sake of his little girl. We are not out of the woods just yet Shikaku. Remember, if neither Jiraiya or Tsunade show up in two weeks time. Our children could die by Baragan Sama's hands like he first threatened, should the Sanin not return, said Choza with Shikaku going pale in the face. Shit. My wife is going to literally kill me if that happens to our son. Maybe even before it happens, grumbled Shikaku knowing his wife wasn't going to be happy with him. In any case, go back to your homes and relate to them what happened here among other things that a select few of you must do regarding your children. Hopefully we can endure this storm and convince Naruto that we are repentant for our actions against him, stated the Sandame Hokage, with many not looking convinced. Only time would tell. Namaka's estates, Aragon looked at the place with appraising eyes. It wasn't grand like the ever-massive homes you see in the form of a daimyo's palace, but it wasn't a run-down piece of crap and certainly worthy of the boy he would one day merge with. It was well furnished, the lighting worked, and everything seemed to be functional since the last day it was used by Naruto's parents. Apparently Kishina had thought to put preservation seals throughout the house to ensure time would make the building fall apart. While his power would destroy the seals and the house if unleashed, he had to admire the woman's smarts for doing that in the event no one was around to keep up maintenance. It's a bit dusty, but nothing a good cleaning won't fix, remarked Baragon, while he once more mentally noted how wonderful it had been to have no walls or ceiling when it came to his version of Las Notches back before Azen came to see him. No dust to clean up for one thing. 
and while such an act in cleaning would be beneath him given his royal status, Kishina was most helpful in providing a jutsu that took care of that easily with one use. So a few one-handed hand signs later, Aragon sent his energy in a non-lethal manner throughout the manor and obliterated all the dust in the house. With his task done, the former Hollow King and the Yuzumaki boy's body walked to the master bedroom to give Naruto's form its much-needed rest. While he had impressed and terrified the fools running the village, it was merely to do just that and not look deeper into the situation surrounding the boy's form. In truth, the body needed more time to get used to the changes, the power, and required uninterrupted time stabilizing it. Naruto was his heir now, a life he had met for only a few hours, yet the merging of memories and seeing the child's living condition, using that term lightly, brought about a deep form of attachment. It was strange for the former Hollow King, but Baragon felt that this was perhaps some unseen deity's intervention into his life and making him start over in the form of this boy. A new lease on life if you will, which was ironic considering he was the embodiment of death and took the lives of others long before humans understood half the things they do now. Shaking his, or rather Naruto's, head of these thoughts, the former Espada and Hollow King went to the master bedroom for a good night's sleep in a comfortable bed. Hayuga clan compound the next day. Hayuga Hiashi sat among the Hayuga clan elders, his first of two daughters, Hayuga Hinata sitting across from them, her cousin, and Hiashi's nephew Hayuga Niji, was to the side to listen to the upcoming events. The shy girl had been surprised to be summoned to a meeting so soon after graduating, since the clan had did little to praise her on account it was expected and therefore not needing of praise. If anything, they would have been shamed if she failed to be among the top kanoichi and student at the academy when it came to competing against the other clan heirs. With the rumors and news spreading throughout the village from last night into the morning, it was hard to tell what rumors were really true and what rumors were actually false, given how everyone kept telling everyone else different things at the same time. As you all may have heard, the incident last night regarding Yuzumaki Naruto and the stealing of the Forbidden Scroll was indeed true. While the true nature of why the boy did it is not fully known, it is suspected that the child was tricked into doing it if eyewitness accounts about the late academy instructor Mizuki talking to Yuzumaki Naruto hours before the theft are indeed true and was hoping to find some way to earn the right to be a genin of Konoha. In doing so, the boy discovered an object sealed away by the Shadame Hokage in the Forbidden Scroll to ensure it was never used by anyone and tried to use it on himself in the belief the object would in fact kill him, stated Hiashi hearing his daughter gasp and a look of horror at hearing how Naruto tried to end his life last night. I take it that the boy has failed in that regard just like he does in everything else that is life, remarked one Hayuga elder while not bothering to hide his disgust for Naruto. Correct. Yuzumaki Naruto did not die last night, but something inside of him did, and something else took its place, answered Hiashi with the Hayuga elders stiffening before they looked at Hinata, seeing her own curiosity regarding what he just said. Hiashi san, is it wise to speak of this topic with your daughter and nephew here? The Sandame's law was very clear on the matter, spoke a second elder with this one next to Hiashi. The law this clan and this village have never truly followed. Besides, I know the other clan heads are having this very same meeting regarding Naruto, and this the reason the law was repealed is because Yuzumaki Naruto no longer holds the QB in him. The fox was killed in a sense by Yuzumaki Naruto when he used the forbidden object in the forbidden scroll of sealing, answered Hiashi, with everyone shocked by this news. So the boy survived. I take it he will be punished then for killing Kanoha's defense against other Jinchuriki from other shinobi villages. Remarked the first Hayuga elder, while Hinata's eyes widened in fear of the boy she admired and had a crush on being punished. No. The boy will not be punished because of this other matter that must be addressed and will not be challenged by anyone here. After the QB was killed, a new entity far stronger than the Biju manifested itself and was not exactly pleased with how the Leaf Village treated Yuzumaki Naruto for the past 12 years of his life. Several Jounin died last night that according to this entity had a hand in Naruto's abuse and were never punished for it, answered Hiashi with the Hayuga elders scowling. The boy has been a pest since his birth. What does it matter if the village's Jinchuriki suffers growing up? That is their purpose so they can be molded into fighting weapons for their village. The fact the QB is gone now because of the boy's cowardice cannot go unpunished Hiashi. You must make a motion before the Hokage to see the boy suffers for his insolence. Stated a third Hayuga elder, who happened to be Hiashi's father and a fanatical supporter of the cage bird seal. Such a motion will never make it to our next meeting with the Hokage. The entity who called himself Baragon Luisenbern was a former king of hollows, which are beings of terrible power forged from the tortured souls they once were in life and the darkness of the abyss they lived in after dying. His power was what everyone inside and outside of Kanoha felt last night with that large tower of energy belonging to him. If we make any move against Naruto for any reason, it will mean death not only for us. But our children too, stated Hiashi before looking at Hinata and then at Niji. This is insulting. 
exclaimed the first Hyuga elder, while Hiashi's father nodded in full agreement. Aragon sama has laid out various conditions to be met by the Hokage to help ensure Naruto does stay in the village, if only for a time, and additional terms were also made to various clans with daughters around the boy's age. Apparently, the boy is the son our late Yandame Hokage and his wife Yuzumaki Kishina of the Yuzumaki clan of Whirlpool Country, replied Hiashi, with the Hyuga elders sucking in their teeth and Hinata now gasping again in shock. So the boy has some nobility. He's still a mongrel when compared to the Hyuga clan. Remarked Hiashi's father with Hiashi himself sighing and trying to reel in his temper. On the contrary father. Naruto's standing now rivals if not surpasses ours, since he is the son of Akage and that of clan heiress on his mother's side, since she was meant to lead the Yuzumaki clan prior to her marriage to Namaka's Minato. But that was ended when her clan was nearly wiped out as a child and was brought here to live with Yuzumaki Nito, who you are all aware was the Shadame Hokage's wife. Stated Hiashi with the elders looking like they swallowed a thousand lemons. And what of this condition regarding clans with daughters? Asked the second Hyuga elder in a more passive fashion. Aragon knows of the cry and how Naruto meets all the requirements. He is more or less commanding each clan with daughters to set up arranged marriages with these girls and the boy, answered Hiashi with Hinata blushing with wide eyes and two out of the three Hyuga elders, now looking ready to explode. Absolutely not. Exclaimed the first Hyuga elder. This is beyond insulting. This creature dares demand this of us and the other clans here in Kanoha. I say we kill him and the boy right now. Exclaimed Hiashi's father with Hiashi moments away from losing his temper and lashing out at him. Enough. This is not up for discussion. It must be done. Failure to comply results in the entire clan and the village as a whole, paying the price for any defiance against Baragan Sama's demands, in the form of death. This arranged marriage on our end will help Naruto form attachments to Konoha and not leave the village to possibly live somewhere else that could possibly be our enemy. The boy has no reason to be loyal to Konoha right now. He has no reason to stay in Kanoha, and this village as a whole is the source behind it. So by all means, protest loudly, take to the streets, make a motion before the Sandame Hokage, and denounce the boy along with the entity inside of him, if it will make you feel better. In the end, you will only be signing your death warrant and those within the entire village for your arrogance. Countered Hiashi while glaring at each elder, and then looked at Hinata with her head down, so not to see his gaze. She knew what was being asked of her. It wasn't uncommon for noble clans to do this with noble families to further influential and political ties. Still, it wasn't something that Hinata was against since it was with Naruto and not some spoiled noble thinking that he could do anything on account of who his parents were. Surely Hanabi is the best choice then for this arrangement. We can hold out longer in the process and by that point the boy should be satisfied with the other wives he will already have at the time, said Hiashi's father, while Hinata stiffened slightly at the mention of her younger sister. No. Such a ploy will be seen immediately and might insult Baragan Sama and Naruto to that extent, depending on what the future holds in terms of his personality. I will not risk the Hyuga clan much less Konoha as a whole, simply to stall for time in the hopes the boy's harem no longer possesses any vacancies. Hinata. Exclaimed Hiashi with his voice cracking like a whip when calling his daughter's name. Yes, father? Asked Hinata while now looking at her father in the eyes. If you were to be in arranged marriage with this boy, would you be able to do your duty in being his wife and do everything in your power to keep him happy? To keep him loyal to Konoha? Asked Hiashi with Hinata looking away slightly and had to fight the urge to look away further before stealing her resolve while remembering this was connected to Naruto. I would do what I must for Konoha and the Hyuga clan. However, my marriage to Naruto-kun alone may not be enough and in order for me to be a proper wife to him in the future. I must first be his friend. Something which I was told not to do from the start, answered Hinata, while keeping her tone formal without a stutter, which surprised herself greatly, yet it also had a small hint of a new screwed up in there, though the Hyuga elders, her father, and Niji just imagined it, since they never believed she would do that. Which we were mistaken from the start to do it seems. Hinata, it is your duty as the Hyuga heiress, and now a Konoha shinobi to gain Naruto's friendship before advancing that relationship to the next level. You will befriend him, start a relationship with him, and eventually marry him for the sake of having his children that all these things will help him stay loyal to Konoha, commanded Hiashi with Hinata bowing humbly at the order. Wait. What about the Byakugan? We can't have the bloodline leave the protection of the clan. She must have it sealed first before pursuing the boy. Exclaimed Hiashi's father with Hinata wincing and Niji having a small smirk on his face. Again, such a move on our part might be considered an insult to Baragan Sama and possibly Naruto himself, countered Hiashi with his father sneering at him. The hell with how those two things feel about it. 
If this former Hollow King wishes to have an arranged marriage with your failure of a child, then she must have the cage bird seal on her, and another that blocks the bloodline from rising through her offspring she might have with the brat, stated he Ashi's father since he felt Hinata was a failure as a granddaughter and refused to let any child she produced have their bloodline unless it was within the walls of the clan itself. That brat as you called him will one day become the most powerful person in Konoha and even the world, since his power will only grow as time goes on. As such, any child Hinata will have will have that same potential, and their eyes will reach a level beyond anything we have seen in our generation. Surely you would not wish to cripple the next generation of potential Byakugan users simply because of your shrewd interpretation of Hyuga clan traditions. Questioned Hiashi to his father with the elderly man looking like he was ready to spit fire from his mouth. Traditions are what keep this clan pure Hiashi. Traditions are what kept Kumo from taking the eyes of our clan, and you when this child of yours was kidnapped so easily with the end result of her failure costing you your brother's life. Deprived your nephew of his own father. Exclaimed Hiashi's father with Hiashi closing his eyes and balled his fists while Hinata looked down in shame. Niji for his part glared at Hinata. Perhaps in some manner of speaking, you are correct in that regard, but had we simply changed certain traditions to match the times. Perhaps my brother would not have been the one so willing to throw his life away for me. Perhaps if traditions matched the times, it would have been Hinata who was deprived of a father, and not Niji. Traditions this clan has been unwilling to change out of fear of the very word, countered Hiashi with a piercing look aimed at his father, before he turned his attention to his now disheartened daughter. She cherished her uncle very much. No cruel bone in her body. And what was her reward for such loving nature? Scorn, hatred, and disgust from those that perceived it a weakness while those in the branch family adored the girl. Well. Almost everyone. Regardless, the terms he set are too high if the girl is not fitted with a cage bird seal and bloodline seal to prevent birthing Hyuga children. If this Baragon does not like it, then he can contend with me and me alone to prevent any true disaster to befall the clan, stated Hiashi's father with Hiashi letting out something of him sound from his throat. If you wish to speak to Baragon sama I'm sure it can be arranged through the Hokage, since the Sandame is scheduled to meet with the entity within Naruto by the end of the week, replied Hiashi, while seeing his father smirk in a sense of victory, but Hiashi himself knew what his foolish old man was planning to get close to Baragon and try to perform a noble service by killing the entity through killing Naruto via lethal gentle fist strike being dealt to the boy, something Hiashi was sure would fail spectacularly. Namaka's estates one week later, Aragon Sider rather made Naruto's body make the sigh while he sat in meditative stance to focus the energies within this body. So much focus was required for a body so young like this one and in another age or time would have been taxing to the former Hollow King's patience. But he was not that man. Not anymore. The seal on this boy, even when ripped apart from his manifestation once absorbing all of the Biju's chakra, was still in effect and it was only a matter of months before Naruto was once again in command of this body. The boy had much to learn, but couldn't do that while awake and running around in the daily life of the world around him. No. The mindscape was the best choice to teach the boy, as he had done knowing time had no real meaning there like it did in the outside world, and the boy would need every second in his mind to process the knowledge before him. Not just Baragon's knowledge either, but that of his parents, and what they know that would pass down to him given the pieces of their souls sealed with the boy, would be devoured, peacefully without pain, into Naruto with all of their knowledge joining him. The Yandame's Jutsus, the Uzumaki bloodline his mother had, and their skills in the art of sealing. The last part was fascinating to Baragon, as he saw what those seals could do through their memories and what they could do when used properly. Even Aizen would not deny how potent they could be when used and their potential to do many great things when one became a master of such things. Such a skill was the boy's birthright, it was in his blood, and Baragon would see Naruto was using it like he should have been from the start. There was just one problem. His power still hadn't stabilized properly. Browning, Baragon tried to understand why that was the case. Sure demonic energy did tend to have that extra kick, it wasn't the first time he had devoured the stuff to the gut when eaten, though given how this was much more than a little, the former Espada and Hollow King believed time was needed to properly digest the demonic power before it settled down. Only it had not settled down. Not entirely. He was missing something. Something important. Something Baragon suspected was in connection to the fox, since the demonic energy was connected to this incomplete stability he was feeling. Perhaps the source of the instability lies not in the fox himself, but the manner in which he was sealed and the events prior to the sealing. Time to take a dive through memory lane thought Baragon with a hint of amusement before he called upon the Biju's long line of memories and flipped through them until he got to that one night of the sealing 12 years ago when this boy's parents sacrificed themselves for him. Once again, he suspected Tia Haribo would acknowledge what they had done for their son and given them a nod of respect for that. 
Not many humans would do what they did for their loved ones, since he had seen enough humans do the exact opposite. Pushing that aside for now, Baragan found the memory of that night and played it like a movie with his eyes watching every little detail go by. He stopped the memory when he saw how the Yande Mhokage split the QP in two and sealed the other half into his body to ensure there would be no resurrection from the fox, should the boy. A somewhat stupid move in Baragan's mind since so many people hated the fox and if they learned that if the boy died, then the fox died with him. The child wouldn't have lived past his first year being born. Fortunately, by some mere manner of luck, no one knew this little fact and was the only thing that stayed the cruel hands of the majority in the village that hated the boy for holding QP from ending the child's life. But at least now Baragan knew where to go for the problem he was having with this body. With that in mind after getting up from the ground, the former Hollow King opened up a deskera for himself and entered the dark void to his intended destination, where the Kages were all buried. When he reached his destination, Baragan looked around to see the Gravisite before him, the memories of the past from the QP when he was in Yuzumaki Mido, and her visiting the Shadim's grave every so often. Pretty soon her brother-in-law would join his brother here, and everyone fully expected the Sandain to do the same before he had officially retired, after naming Namakiz Minato his successor. Only for the man to be buried here before the Sandame Hokage himself and of course the wives of each Hokage joining them. Hashirama had Yuzumaki Mito, his brother had died a bachelor, the Yandame was buried with his wife and the Sandame's wife. Well this was interesting. So that explains his dislike for Naruto. Why he caved so easily to the demands of the people. The old fool hated Naruto for the loss of his wife. Figures the man had a reason aside from appeasing the masses like he first claimed. I should simply kill him at our next meeting if it weren't for the fact I'm letting Naruto decide what to do with the village when he takes over, thought Baragan before walking over to the grave that was marked as the Yandames before slamming his cane down on the ground. The energy sent from the cane spread through the ground around the coffin below before the soil that kept it hidden was obliterated instantly. The wooden coffin was covered in seals to preserve the body, and it was clear no one had touched the thing since it was put in the ground. What do you think you're doing? Came a an angry voice behind Baragan, and the former Espada in Naruto's body turned to look behind him to see a masked shinobi with one eye and gravity defying silver white hair glaring at him. This does not concern you, Leaf Shinobi. Leave me, replied Baragan before he turned back to the coffin in front of him, and was rewarded with a loud sound of chirping birds. Step away from my sensei's coffin, commanded the masked shinobi with his jutsu of choice in hand. Your sensei's coffin? Ah. You must be Hada Kakashi, remarked Baragan before he turned more to get a good look at the man in front of him. I am. What is it to you? Countered Kakashi before he got a good look at this would-be grave robber. Surely you've heard the talk going on around the village about me? About a being that devoured QB, who currently possesses the body of the Jinchuriki that held QB and is also the son of the Yandame Hokage. Your sensei if what you just told me is indeed true, replied Baragan with a small chuckle. Why are you at his grave and disturbing his final resting place? Asked Kakashi while keeping his eyes on Baragan. Because the man's body holds something I want. Something I need. Something he knew could not be known to Kanoha's populace, knowing it could and most likely would mean the death of his son, answered Baragan before slamming his cane down and made the coffin jump out of the ground from the hole it was in on before landing to the right of the former Espada. I don't care what you are or what power you wield. I won't let you defile his grave and him. I will kill you, even if it means killing his own son. Exclaimed Kakashi and saw Baragan was amused if not a bit impressed. You have courage. I'll give you that much boy. But you are no match for me when it comes to killing the boy. You tried once already with it ending in utter failure, replied Baragan with Kakashi narrowing his eyes at him. Step away from my sensei's coffin. Now. Commanded Kakashi while Baragan letting out a small chuckle. Make me. That is. If you can. Challenged Baragan before stabbing the coffin with his cane and shattered the lid into tiny pieces to reveal the body of the Yandame Hokage himself. Letting out a bellowing war cry, Kakashi moved at incredible speed toward Baragan, his Rikiri in hand, his Sharingan eye spinning, and his intent to kill was obvious. Baragan, however, did not make a move to stop Kakashi, waiting for the man to get close, and just when the Jounin was about to strike, did something shocking happen. Baragan casually dodged the attack a mere second before it would have made contact and grabbed the outstretched arm at the elbow. Seconds later after that, Kakashi fell into his sensei's grave, clutching his now broken arm and crying out in pain while Baragan looked down at him like he was nothing. My arm. It's broken. He somehow broke with just a simple touch. Is that his true power he told the Sandame and the others about yesterday. Thought Kakashi while looking up to see Baragan looking down at him with an impassive face. Your jutsu was impressive. You must be very proud of it. Though considering your own actions against your sensei's son in connection to that jutsu, I am a bit surprised that you would even use it again on Naruto and myself to that extent over your sensei here. 
it's a shame you didn't learn common sense during the last 12 years you spent hating the boy and wishing him dead at every turn. Perhaps I should seal your fate now and simply bury you alive like you nearly let the villagers do when Naruto was six. Perhaps then you will know what it is to die alone in the darkness. Something you wanted Naruto do while they were trying to bury him alive, remarked Baragon with Kakashi struggling to get off the ground. What did you do to me? Asked Kakashi with Baragon smirking before turning towards the exposed coffin of the Yandame Hokage. The question you should be asking yourself boy is what I can still do to you and this village should I become truly disgusted by your arrogant stupidity. Remarked Baragon as he knelt down in front of the coffin and ripped the dead man's shirt open and saw the same seal Naruto had on his body. Stop. Baragon sama you need to stop. Exclaimed the Sandame Hokage with a team of Anbu behind him. And I should stop what I'm doing now why exactly? Questioned Baragon while he was tracing his fingers gently over the seal. Because you are dishonoring one of our village's heroes, replied Hiruzen while seeing the entity in Naruto's body let out a scoffing sound. You've done that already fool. What does it matter if I desecrate the body when you've already dishonored him in mind and spirit? Besides, what I need to do is vital for the boy and I will not be interrupted in doing what needs to be done, countered Baragon with his eyes shooting daggers at the old Kage before he thrust his left hand into the seal and pulled the yin half of Kyuubi out of the body. Right before he, much to the shock and horror of everyone around him, devoured the Kyuubi's yin chakra through the mouth into Naruto's body while laughing the entire time. When it was over, the Konoha shinobi watching him could only stare at the entity in Naruto's body, who let out a sigh of pleasure at devouring more demonic energy and began walking away from them with a smile on his face. What did you hope to accomplish by doing that Baragon? Answer me. Demanded Hiruzen with the former Espada stopping in his walk and turned to look at the old Kage with a look of disgust in his eyes. Don't even think of commanding me old Kage. My power was far beyond you before and has now exceeded it even further. Because I am in such a good mood, I will let your insolence towards me slide this one time and simply walk away without giving you an answer. But should you continue to push me, this village will be destroyed along with all of those within it, replied Baragon before he simply opened up another desker and walked through it. This is getting out of control fast. Damn it, Jiraiya. Soon a day. Get your assess back here soon thought the Sandame Hokage, while looking from where Baragon had walked away into that strange black void to the grave of the Yandame Hokage. Things were definitely spiraling out of control, and the village itself was not liking it one bit. That's it for today guys, hope did you enjoyed this video if you do please leave a like share and subscribe, and please complete 300 likes on this video, take care thanks for watching.